Good morning, micro followers. For those who are uh, clicking on this video to find out how to clean your Nurture Right 360 incubator, I'm going to start off with that. But we are going to restock the incubator with the leftover quail eggs that I have. I don't really have a high expectation of hatch rate on that one because the eggs have been sitting due to the tray in here. I had to double up on eggs. Some of the eggs weren't rotated correctly, and we're going to do a count on that here in a little bit. But for those who are chiming in just for the cleaning purposes, I'm going to go ahead and cover that first. So, um, I had 18 quail hatch out in this incubator over the last several days. And for cleaning the top, I literally just used a wet rag, obviously with the power not on, a wet rag with um, a bleach and water solution. Very, 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 very minimal bleach because bleach does leave a re residue and so make sure you rinse, 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 rinse. Okay, so I just wiped out the inside, wiped off this, got in any cracks and crevices that I could get into and then dried it with a, after rinsing, dried it with a paper towel. On the outside, I did the exact same thing. For the inside, the tray, this is the Turner tray. I actually put it in bleach water, hot bleach water, swished it around a good bit. It doesn't get too awful dirty because it gets removed from the incubator quite early. This tray, however, and the, um, if I can get it out of here one-handed, this tray and the bottom of the incubator gets pretty dirty. Um, same thing with this one, stuck it down into the bleach water. I had an old toothbrush, I scrubbed it up real good. Um, rinse, 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 and then set that off to the side. This one, on the other hand, um, you cannot submerge this in water. Um, so I put it in the sink just like this. I put water in the basin, just no different than what you would do if you were um, adding water to, for your humidity purposes. I took the toothbrush and scrubbed it. I set it up sideways in the sink and then sprayed it out, paying special close attention, trying not to get it down into this little divot right here. Um, and then after I get everything all washed out, um, I don't dry it per se um, manually. I, I wipe off the lid a little bit, but that's about the extent of that. And then I reassemble. And then because I am restocking the incubator, you always want your incubator to be up to temperature before you put your eggs in there. So to dry it, I literally just reassemble the incubator, leave the air vent open, and turn it on. And an incubator gets up to 100 degrees, so I just let that run. Now I'm waiting for my humidity to drop because as most of you know, I do dry incubation. I do not mess with the humidity until lockdown. So um, what I pretty much did was um, with a really quick um, air dry, pretty much, I reassembled the incubator, turned it on, the temperature got up to 100 degrees. It took about an hour uh, for the humidity to drop back down and everything in there is now dry. So for cleaning out your Nurture Right, um, I use, like I said, a very small uh, ratio of hot bleach water and that's how I sanitize and clean out the incubator. Now, pressing forward, we're going to go ahead and close the air vent on this and get into restocking and doing a quick count on the quail eggs. Now, you'll see here I have a tray of the hatched eggs. These will eventually be baked and then ground into um, a fine powder to replace the calcium um, into their feed once we, once we get them into something a little bit with a heavier grain. I have, let me put these off to the side. I have these eggs left. These eggs I did a float test on this morning. This is literally all I have left. So we are putting eight eggs into the incubator. Um, like I said, I don't have high expectations for a hatch rate for these uh, because they've been sitting for, oh, let's see, what, 20 days now? You're not supposed to let them sit past uh, 14 
uh, they start to lose their viability. But these eight I put into, I did a float test and they all sank. Supposedly, that means they're still viable. I had several that floated. I think there was five that floated almost immediately. So they were put off to the side with the rest. Unfortunately, this is how much I have left that did not hatch. So between the five and the ones that uh, did not hatch out of the first round in the incubator, unfortunately, this is what I've got left. And I'm going to do a, a math count on that here real quick. So I can calculate a hatch rate. And if I had to do this all over again, I would do it backwards. My first round, I doubled up the eggs in there because I was thinking, like, you know, I want to go ahead and get the most of my hatch rate. I didn't want to be left with a whole lot of eggs left over that had been sitting for several weeks. But unfortunately, because they were doubled up in there like they were, um, some of the eggs did not turn. Obviously, a lot of the eggs did not turn. So um, I'm not sure that my strategy of uh, doubling up on the first round was as effective as I wanted it to be. So if I had to do it over again, I would do it backwards. I would single in there, which this incubator holds 22 eggs, and I would have hatched out the 22. Um, I do have 18 or 17 chicks. We lost one, but you know, it could have been 22. So I'm not so sure I did that the correct way. So now I'm going to count out real quick what I have left here. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, three, four, twenty-five. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 24, 25. I have 25 eggs that did not hatch from the first round of incubation, and I had 40, um, 43 in there because I broke one. So I started out with 43. 25 of those 43 did not hatch because I doubled up the eggs in there. And then when I did a float test on the eggs that have been waiting patiently to go into the incubator, I ended up with five more. So not a very impressive hatch rate at all. So like I said, if I had to do it all over again, I would just put them in here as a single eggs and hatch that out first and then restock um, <clears throat> after that one, after that hatch. So now we are sitting once again at, um, hundred degrees. I've got the timer set on 19 days. I think I'm going to give it day 15 and then do a lockdown on 15 instead of 14. Because when I locked down on 14, um, we literally didn't get any, the first hatch until three days later. So I'm going to go ahead and push it for an extra day and see what happens there. So, without further ado, round two. I wonder if I should put those on the outside. It isn't going to matter. It shouldn't matter. Okay, so there we are. We are restocked with our eight leftover quail eggs. We're going to let this get back up to temp. Like I said, not messing with the humidity until shut down, which will be on day 15. So, stick around. Let's see what happens. <laughs> 